Hi there, welcome back to the MathScale series on Jetpack Data Store. In the following two episodes of this series, we will cover additional concepts to understand how Data Store works under the hood so that you'd have everything at your disposal to use it in a production environment. In this episode specifically, we will be focusing on Kotlin data class serialization, synchronous work, and dependency injection via Hilt. Let's jump into Android Studio to take a look at these concepts in code. In our previous episodes, we referred to our preferences and proto code labs for showcasing data store code. We'll continue using the same code bases and work off of them. In these code labs, we interacted with our data store instances through the delegate construction once at the top level of a Kotlin file. We would then use the same instance throughout the application as a singleton. We require a singleton because creating more than one instance of data store for one given file can break all data store functionality. However, in a production environment, we would usually obtain the data store instance via dependency injection. So let's take a look at how data store would work with Hilt, a dependency injection library that will help us reduce the boilerplate of doing manual dependency management. If you're not familiar with Hilt, we encourage you first to go through the Hilt code lab to learn the basic concepts. To begin using Hilt, make sure you've added all the necessary setup steps to enable it. All apps that use Hilt must contain an application class that is annotated with a Hilt Android app annotation to trigger Hilt's code generation. In our case, we will create a simple tasks app and add it to our Android manifest. To obtain a preferences data store instance through injection, we need to tell Hilt how to properly create it. We use the preferences data store factory and add it to a Hilt module. Let's break this down a bit. Corruption handler is invoked if a corruption exception is thrown by the serializer when the data cannot be deserialized, which instructs data store how to replace the corrupted data. Migrations is a list of data migrations for moving previous data into data store. This defines the scope in which IO operations and data editing functions will execute. In this case, we're reusing the same scope as the data store API default. Produce file generates the file objects for data store based on the provided context and name. Now that we have a module to instruct Hilt on how to create our data store, we need to make a few more adjustments to be able to build successfully. Hill can provide dependencies to other Android classes that have the Android entry point annotation. If you annotate an Android class with this annotation, then you also must annotate other Android classes that depend on it. That means we need to add the following Android entry point annotation to our activity and a Hilt view model one to our view model. In this sample, we don't have any other more complex injections, such as custom builders, factories, or interface implementations. So we can rely on Hilt and construction injection for any other dependencies that we need to pass. We will use the inject annotation in the constructor of a class to instruct Hilt how to provide the instances. Proto data store would follow a very similar pattern. You'd additionally need to provide a user preferences serializer and a precise instruction on how to migrate from shared preferences, which we've covered in more detail in our previous proto data store episode. And that's it. Now you'll be able to run the app and verify that all the dependencies are being injected properly. In our previous episodes, we've covered how preferences and proto data store approach structuring and serializing your persistent data. Proto uses type objects backed by protocol buffers, while preferences uses key value pairs as our data representation, similarly to share preferences. Under the hood, both implementations save data on disk in a file using protocol buffers. But Data Store also allows you to customize this and use data classes and Kotlin serialization. Preferences Serializer just has one additional step of transforming the key value pairs into protobufs and vice versa. This means Preferences Data Store simplifies working with protobufs by adding an additional layer on top of its low level proto implementation. This way, you get a lot of the benefits of working with Data Store, but using shared preferences like way of structuring data using key value pairs. However, if you'd like to use Kotlin serialization to structure your data, all you need to do is define a fully immutable data class and implement a data store serializer. Data store relies on equals and hash code, which are automatically generated for data classes. They also generate two string and copy functions, which are useful for debugging and updating data. 
It is very important to ensure that your class is immutable since Datastore is not compatible with mutable types. Using mutable types with Datastore will result in bugs due to data inconsistency and race conditions. Data classes aren't necessarily immutable by default, so you need to make sure to use vowels everywhere instead of vars. Arrays are mutable, so you shouldn't expose them. Even if we use the read-only list as a member of our data class, it's still mutable. Instead, you should consider using immutable or persistent collections. Keep in mind that using mutable types as a member of your data class makes it mutable. Instead, you should ensure that all members are immutable types. Kotlin serialization supports multiple formats, including JSONs and protocol buffers. In this example, we'll continue with JSON. In order to read and write your data class to JSON using Kotlin serialization, you need to annotate your data class with a serializable annotation and override the serializers write to and read from. Here's an example with user preferences. Note that parcelables are not safe to use with data store because the data format may change between Android versions. Pass the newly created serializer into data store when constructing it. Reading data looks the same as with protobufs. You can just use the generated copy function to update data. Using data store with Kotlin serialization and data classes can reduce boilerplate and help simplify your code. However, you must be careful not to introduce bugs through mutability. Throughout this series, we've mentioned Datastore's fully asynchronous API coming from its internal usage of Kotlin coroutines and flow. To prevent potential ANRs and UI jank happening when heavier IO operations are done on the UI thread, Datastore does not offer ready-to-use synchronous support. Datastore saves its dataset in a file and under the hood performs all data operations on dispatcher's IO unless specified otherwise, keeping your UI thread unblocked. This API structure is one of the main advantages of Datastore over its predecessor shared preferences and how you would use Datastore in the majority of cases. However, if you do find that your code requires you to work synchronously with Datastore, whether it's because of a dependency to another API running on the main thread, or because your current setup requires you to retrieve some persisted values for your UI setup, you could use Run Blocking Coroutine Builder to read Datastore synchronously. This will block the calling thread until Datastore returns. If you find yourself in a situation where you need to use this approach, do spend some time figuring out if it's absolutely necessary to block the main thread. Think about how you could use the provided Datastore async alternatives or refactor your current code to avoid run blocking, for example, by preloading the data asynchronously. If this is impossible, make sure you cover all potential UI jank scenarios with error handling, cancellation, and timeouts, or some nice visuals to make the user experience as smooth as possible. Today, we've covered three completely new data store concepts, Kotlin data class serialization, how to perform synchronous work with data store, and how to inject it using Hilt. Join us for the next episode, where we continue with other concepts, such as how to do data store to data store migrations and testing. See you soon.